Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Ia is the Basi with you once again on the practice question series. And this is histopathology practice question part four in our series. Um, this particular video is a bit technical, so it's a bit difficult. So I've actually changed the manner in which I have asked this question. We are asking it in such a way that we are practicing together rather than wanting to know whether you know it or not. So I've done it in such a way that we look at the question wholly so that in case this question is asked in another way or in another dimension, you could actually use the answers you have learned in this particular video to like answer those other questions. So you will see a little bit of change in the format, but it's so much more exciting. Please, this is a free resource, like I always say. If you have not commented, please do so. If not subscribed, please do so. If you have not shared, please do so. And if you have not liked, please give us a thumbs up, put on an emoji. We need to stay alive. We don't collect money for this channel. So the only way we can stay aboard is through your support and goodwill. So, welcome. Fun facts, like we always do. Do you know that you could actually use a broom to collect cervical smear? <laughs> but it's true, it's amazing, isn't it? I just wonder how they are going to use this broom to collect that sample. Don't worry. When I first found it, I was actually confused. But I now finally found the answer that there is actually a device called a broom device and it looks like this. So please, we are not using this. We are actually using this one. So yes, there is a device called a broom device and it's used to collect cervical spheres. Question number one. Which of the following is true about poisons? A. If a chemical causes a burn or irritation, only on the skin where it is applied that's the site of application that is called local action b systemic action of a poison occurs when the poison enters into the bloodstream and affects all the organs or systems of the body c a and b are true d a and b are false the correct answer is a and b are true poisons can act locally they can also act systemically all right, question number two. Instruments in histopathology include the flotation bath. This is where it is. The microtome, this is a rotary microtome. Microscope, that's so easy. I didn't put that. Automated tissue processor, all of the above. Yes, all these are instruments that we see in the histopathology lab. Question number three. There are... All, all these are outcomes of chronic inflammation except neutrophilia. You have a hypertrophic scar, yes. Granuloma formation, yes. Cirrhosis, yes. Neutrophilia is usually um, an increase in neutrophils and occurs when there is acute inflammation and not chronic inflammation. But the others like the granuloma formation, your cirrhosis, and your hypertrophic scarring are common outcomes of chronic inflammation where you have prolonged tissue damage. Question number four, which of the statements are true? Carcinoma reflects to a malignant tumor derived from epithelial cells which line organs and tissue. B, papilloma is a benign tumor of squamous epithelium. It's not malignant. C, adenoma is a benign tumor of glandular epithelium. D, sarcomas are malignant tumors that arrive, arise from mesenchymal tissue. E, all of the above. Question number five, which is true for the acid fast tissue stains? A, neutral red cannot be used as a counter stain. B, contains carbofushin, fushin dye. C, AFB positive organism stain red. D, Zell Nelson is the most commonly used. E, all of the above. So you do not use um, your neutral red as a counter stain. 
you actually use methylene blue, all right? Because um, when you're using acid-fixed uh, stain emitters like the NLC, you use methylene blue as a kind of stain. And when you use this method, the carbon fushin there is used to stain uh, the AFB uh, bacilli red, and then the non fast uh, elements are kind of stained blue. All right. So next question, the following are connected tissue stains, except A, Gordon and Sweets, B or CN, C, Van Giesen, D, Methyl Green Pyronine. Actually, your answer would be Methyl Green Pyronine because it is used for staining nucleic acids like DNA and RNA and not connected tissue. Um, or CN stains elastic fibers, elastic fibers are connected tissues. Vagison stains, collagen fibers, very beautiful looking stain on the slide. And Gordon and Sweets is used to um, stain reticular fibers, all of which are associated with connective tissue staining. Next question, the uniqueness of skin epithelium is due to the fact that A, it is stratified uh, squamous keratinized, B, it is stratified squamous wrong keratinized, C, it is stratified squamous ciliated. D, stratified squamous non ciliated. Actually, the skin epithelium is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, which means that it has a lot of layers, multiple layers, uh, with a surface layer consisting of dead keratin, keratin filled cell. And this actually kind of provides a tough waterproof uh, barrier, which is unique to the skin. You only use that unique barrier when you start bleaching and making the skin very light. So other surfaces like your oral mucosa are not uh, keratinized. Question number eight. In persons with Turner syndrome, which um, have the 45X karyotype, 0 to 5% of the neutrophils would lack dash. A, basal body, B, drumsticks, C, bar bodies, and D, nucleus. Your answer will be drumsticks because uh, the Turner syndrome uh, kind of represents a female with only one X chromosome. Normally, the neutrophils in this female, in normal females, have a drumstick appendage in, their, uh, in the nucleus, you know, or uh, the neutrophils. But when you have Turner syndrome, these drumsticks are typically absent due to the lack of a second X chromosome. Though bar bodies are also absent in uh, this Turner syndrome, but the question specifically asks about neutrophil structures. So we will go with drumsticks as the correct um, answer. Question number nine, which of the statements is true? A, the papanicola stain, also known as pap stain, is primarily used for cytological screening such as pap smears and cervical cancer detection rather for his, rather than histochemical analysis of tissue. So that is correct. Your casual book of Bielskowski <laughs> and Crisal Fast Violet are actually histochemical methods as opposed to perpendicular stain, which is just a cytological uh, screening method. Yeah, these other ones are histochemical methods used to stain specific tissue components like neuron, nerve fibers, ETC. So all the following is true. D, none of the following is true. I will go with all of the following is true. All right, so next question, which of the statements is true? BRCA1, that's the breast cancer gene one, is an important histochemical marker used in the diagnosis and genetic risk assessment of breast cancer, that is correct. G. FAP is a marker for glial cells in the brain, that is correct. Neuron specific enolase is used in neuroendocrine tumors, correct. P16 is associated with certain cancers, but it's not as specific as the BRCA1 for breast cancer. All of the sentences are true. So you could be asked um, what uh, marker could you use for diagnosis of breast cancer you know that for glial cells you know that for neuroendocrine tumors you know that you know and certain other cancers all right so whatever it is you won't know how to answer that 
Question number 11, hepatocellular carcinoma may be caused by liver cirrhosis, kidney cirrhosis, myocardial infarction, which has to do with heart, brain damage. Your answer will be liver cirrhosis because liver cirrhosis is a risk factor for the development of hepatocellular carcinoma, which is primary liver cancer, and cirrhosis results from chronic liver damage, and then the efforts by the liver to regenerate can lead to mutations and cancerous transformation. So question number 12, in the absence of an odd air oven in histopathology lab, the dash can be used as an alternative. Your answer is the hot plate because the hot plate is an alternative to the hot air for drying slides in histopathology. Um, it's commonly used for adhering tissues to slides after sectioning and for evaporating excess water. So the flotation bath and the water bath are actually used for different purposes, such as stretching your parapen section and incubating slides during thinning. All right. So next question, which of the statements is true? 50% ethanol is commonly used in color restoration in museum specimens. That is correct. Higher concentrations like 95% or absolute ethanol can cause dehydration and hardening of tissues. That is correct. Lower concentrations help to preserve the natural color of the specimen without excessive drying. That is also correct. Question number 14, which of the statements is true? Spaltehol's technique is a tissue clearing method primarily used to render tissues transparent, to visualize vascular and skeletal structure more clearly. That is true. Pearl strain, what did I tell you about in the last video? Anything that has to do with pearls has to do with iron. So pearl stain or the push and do reaction is the recognized histological method used for demonstrating iron or hemosiderin in tissues. C. The Dawson method is primarily used for demonstrating calcium deposit. Dawson method, calcium deposit in gross specimens. So this method enables you to look at specimens without having to bring them under a microscope. You can look at them macroscopically and be able to know if they do have calcium deposits in them, primarily in the, con uh, in the context of pathology and museum spe uh, specimen pre preparation. So all of these are true. Next question, which of the statements is true? pre du charts syndrome is caused by a structural chromosomal abnormality, specifically a deletion of a part of chromosome five, and it's not a numerical abnormality. That is true. klein syndrome, Down syndrome, and Edwards syndrome are all numerical chromosomal abnormalities where individuals have abnormal number of chromosomes. That is true. Structural abnormalities involve either a loss, a gain, or a rearrangement of parts of the chromosomes. That is why you have a change in structure. While numerical abnormalities result from error during cell division, either meiosis or mitosis that can lead to an extra or missing chromosome. So all the above are true. Question number 16, which of the following tests or markers can be used to differentiate human blood for animal from animal blood in a crime scene? You want to be using anti-human serum precipitin test. Your acid phosphatase will be used for seminal fluid. All right. Uh, your alkaline phosphatase is not used for that. Alpha amylase is not used for that. Your anti-human precipitin test is used for in forensic science to determine whether a blood sample is of human origin or animal origin, and it involves using specific antibodies that react with human proteins. Acid phosphatase and alkaline phosphatase are enzymes, and alpha amylase is used to detect saliva, and none of which are relevant to distinguishing um, human blood from animal blood. Question number 17, which facts are true? A, galactose is a monosaccharide, not a disaccharide. Yes, that is true. Also, glucose is a monosaccharide. Uh, what's the other one's name? Spentose. Uh, fructose also is a monosaccharide. 
not a disaccharide, all right? B, the saccharides are composed of two monosaccharide units. For example, uh, your maltose is made up of glucose and glucose, your lactose, glucose and galactose, your sucrose, glucose and fructose, all right? So C, galactose is a simple sugar and a component of lactose, but its own is not a disaccharide. All the statements are actually true. Question number 18. Which parts are false? All antimedia are clearing agents. <laughs> this is like saying all women are wives. <laughs> all antimedia are clearing agents. B, all clearing agents are antimedia. C, antimedia are immiscible with water. D, clearing agents increase the refractive index of tissue. The statement all antimedia acclaring agents is false because not all antimedia acclaring agents. You know, while many clearing agents like xylene or toluene can act as antimedia in histological processing, not all antimedia perform the clearing function. All right, so your antimedia actually refers to substances that are used before the final impregnation with paraffin in tissue processing, and not all of them have clearing. Um, properties, all right, which is why not all antimedia are clearing agents. DASH is used as a preliminary test in sexual assault investigation, like I said before. Acid phosphatase spot test is commonly used to detect uh, seminal stains on fabrics, and acid phosphatase is an enzyme that is found in high concentration in semen. All right, and its presence is used as a preliminary test in sexual assault investigations. 20 and the last, which of the following statements is true? All red O is a fat soluble dye used to stain lipids in tissue sections. It is particularly useful in frozen sections because lipids are preserved in this method. That is true. Alizarin red is used for staining calcium, true. Alcium blue is used for staining mucins, true. Mucic carmine is used for staining epithelial mucins. All of the above are true. I want to say thank you very much for watching this last video for now in the series. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to um, subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share this resource. If you do not have time to comment, an emoji is okay for me. Just tell me you're doing well, up-handed emoji, or you're not doing too well, down-handed emoji. If you think that there are more resources that we need that we can deal with, please put this down in the comments, look at it, and we can see what we can do for you. All right, take care. And from me, this is bye-bye for now. God bless.